Panda bears, Twitter, steroid testing, that girl from the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, what's her name, Kira Knightley, and cupcakes. What do they all have in common? They're overrated. I can't believe I just said that cupcakes are overrated. Look at me. Do you think I believe that? I'll tell you why next. But first, welcome to The Real Story. The Wall Street Journal had an interesting article over the weekend concluding that our economy could withstand $100 a barrel oil. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Honey, what channel is the TV on? This Glenn Beck is giving me some good news. Yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like, but boop, boop, boop. Ooh, sorry, not the case. The real story is, the article said we could handle $100 uh, oil quite well if certain conditions are met. Yeah, too good to be true. Sorry. Um, and Mr. Reality is going to take over here for a second because the conditions are ridiculous. For example, we can survive $100 oil if the price rises slowly. It can't just jump from $80 to $100, which is totally reasonable as long as you forget about the oil shocks of 73 and 75 or, you know, 79 and 80 and 82, and I think there was one in 90 and 91, but that'll never happen again. Condition number two is that interest rates have to stay low. Sure, the current 4.75% federal uh, fund rate looks like a typo compared to the 18, 19, and 20% rates of the early uh, 1980s, but, you know, Reagan was in charge, and we all know he was loopy. You know, they'll never go that high again. And finally, they say that oil-rich countries, and this is my favorite, which I think oil-rich countries is code words for uh, dirtbag countries, like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, they all need to keep pumping their massive profits back into our economy. And that's an easy one. I mean, if you can't count on Middle Eastern dictators and psychotic socialists to keep our economy strong, well, who can you count on? You know, I hate to ask the question that nobody else wants to, but what exactly happens if instead of meeting all three conditions, which I'm sure we will, we meet, let's say, none of them or one of them? Peter Schiff is president of Euro-Pacific Euro Capital and author of Crash Proof. Peter, you're a little more pessimistic than I am, but when it comes to oil, I don't see, I don't see these things happening. First of all, let's take them well, one by one. Uh, gradual oil price increase? I mean, we're talking now about the possibility of war with Iran. I don't, I don't see what difference it makes. I mean, is it gradual? We've moved up from $20 a barrel to $80 a barrel in the last five years. I mean, is that gradual? I mean, based on that approach, we'll be at $100 a barrel next year. Right. But I, I think what they're talking about, and, 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 you know, I talk about this on my radio program, that it's that it's that shock to the system that the economy can't take right now. There's no more give in this economy. It has, the, the real problem, and again, it goes to the premise of this whole article, which is completely ridiculous, that high oil prices don't hurt us as long as we can borrow the money to pay for it. What? Because borrowing isn't free. We've got to pay this money back with interest. So just because we found a way to postpone the pain doesn't mean we're not going to eventually feel it. Okay, so the, the second thing is modest inflation without major interest rate hikes. Well, what, what are the odds of that happening? Well, first of all, we don't have modest inflation. We have high inflation. That's one of the reasons that oil prices are rising in the first place, because the Federal Reserve is creating too many dollars or keeping interest rates too low, so prices are rising for everything, including oil. Yeah. Uh, and then the oil-rich nations like Russia, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia keep investing in our economy. Well, that, that goes back to what I said about the people earning all this money, loaning us back their profits. Again, we still have to pay back all the money that we've borrowed for $50 oil, for $60 oil. But if you look at what's happening to the U.S. dollar, I think that Saudi Arabia and the rest of that gang is going to realize that they're better off keeping their oil profits in euros, in yen, in gold, in anything but U.S. dollars, and that's when the bill is really going to come See, and hit us hard. Peter, I think this is where you become more optimistic than me. I don't think it's just that they're going to look at it as an investment. I mean, you know, you had... You had President Tom meeting with Chavez and Russia and, and, and everybody else. These people are, are looking at us um, as the enemy. They know that they've got us by the throat. What stops them from saying, just put the pressure on here, squeeze? 
Not nothing. And I think what people are starting to appreciate now more and more, and when I used to talk about this, you know, a year or two ago, people really laughed at it, but now more people are starting to accept this, is that the global economy can do very well without American consumers borrowing and spending money. There's plenty of new domestic demand being created in places like China uh, and, and in, in Eastern Europe and, and India that Saudi Arabia will have plenty of people to sell their oil to if Americans are too poor to afford it. Okay, thank you very much. Peter, I appreciate your time.